Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the ear of the Lord's favor. And Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. John challenges How we can love God the Father if we cannot love our brothers or sisters first? And he makes an interesting remark. He says, For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. Well, don't we have a hard time to love our brothers or sisters because we have seen them too much. The more we know someone, the harder we find it to love the person dearly. Often we are deeply disappointed and frustrated our beloved ones. Do you think couples are separated or divorced? because they have seen them, seen each other enough? Isn't it true that we are more willing to send support for the poor and needy we have never seen or met? We love more easily those saints we have never met. But when they were alive, not all people around them loved them. Many saints had to endure hatred and envy of their religious contrarians and superiors. When we read St. Paul's letters, we find even St. Paul didn't find favors from all his co-workers. This is a challenge of love. Some might say, Ignorance is bliss, but ignorance doesn't bring true love. When we are enthusiastic about someone without much knowledge of the person, it is called infatuation. Only when we know but still embrace all shortcomings, it is called love. Does God love us because he has no idea about us? No. He truly loves us because he still gives good things, even if we are evil and sinful. Would you love God, even if he still gives good things to those you hate? If we cannot love our enemies, we will have a very hard time loving God because God also gives our enemies, our foes, good things. It is what St. John means when he teaches us to love all before we love God. Love means embracing someone while knowing their weaknesses and faults. 
To love God means to imitate Him. God loves all by giving them all good things while He knows everyone to their cores. He knows all our sins, but He still loves us. Then, if we want to love God, we should first embrace our brothers and sisters. And this is a painful job. Jesus had to let himself nail on the cross to arrive at this love.